The hope of the resurrection gives us believers something that we can even look at death differently than everybody else. That's right. And there are some people that just believes that death ends it all. And to us, death is just a doorway to everything. Amen. That cold grave out there, if, you just, if that was it and you walked out there to that cold grave and thought that was it, yes, it would seem hopeless. But I've said it when I walk on the ground where believers have been planted. To some, that's a graveyard. To me, it's resurrection ground. There's a hope. That those people that out there, the believers that died, they died in the faith. Yes. Some people say, well, if you die, you don't have faith. No, if you die, you die in faith. Amen. And you know what God does? He gives us temporary healings in this body. Amen. You know what those temporary healings are? They're God's testimonies to you that there's coming one big massive ball of healing. Amen. He ain't throwing this body away. He's gonna bring a complete divine healing to this body. Amen. Now, the resurrection holds the answer, which we're going to go through this so you understand. Now, this ideal, just think about it now, that the body's evil. Don't get upset with me. But if you went to Jerusalem today and you, well, matter of fact, let's just take India. India teaches, they don't teach reincarnation, excuse me, they don't teach resurrection or religion, they teach reincarnation. So guess what? If you believed that this body was temporary and you're only living in it for a while, and when it's done, you'll never need it again because you're going to reincarnate into something else, then really, technically, it wouldn't matter what you do with this body. So why do we have hardly any graveyards in India? Because their mindset is, This body is evil. You'll only use it one time, so let's annihilate it. So they'll burn it up. It's called cremation. And the reason they cremate it is, it's because they don't believe there's any future use in it. That's the attitude behind cremation, and that's why you don't see a lot. But anytime you go to Jerusalem and you watch the Jews, they bury their dead. You know why they bear their dead? They believe there's a future. It's the attitude. The attitude is this body will be used again. Hey, folks, do you realize what the Holocaust was about? It was a desecration against their bodies because they believed in a resurrection. And they, they, they cremated them believers' body. Number one, it was a Trinitarian doctrine that cremated the bodies of those that believed in the God, one God who's a God of resurrection. Now, here's what I want to get behind that. And I'm not going to debate with you about whatever you do. I'm saying there's an attitude behind something. That's what I watch. I watch the attitude. The attitude is there's no use for this body. In other words, it's evil. The quicker I can get out of it, the better off I am. Now, brother, I believe the body is affected by evil. But I like this body. I believe this body will be used again. So in preparation of it, I'm making preparation. I don't want you burning it up. Burn a seed up. Burn it up and stick it in the ground and see if it do you any good. No, when Paul preaches the resurrection, he types our body with a seed going into the ground. Burn that seed up and tell me you'll get anything out of it. There's an attitude behind Christianity. And the attitude is Christians believe in the resurrection. We don't hold the Greek philosophy that our body's evil and there's no intrinsic value about it at all. It just be done. Now the, the reincarnation believes that you'll come back in a different form. The resurrection is not reincarnation. Listen, I'm gonna go further. And it is not replacement. Resurrection is to pick up the very same thing that goes down. Yes. What about these Christians that were beheaded and some burned at the stake? See, that wasn't by choice, but they were burned at the stake. What about them? What about these people that are bodies are separated? One part of them's over here, one part's over there, and some have been blown to the seas. What about all these hundreds of thousands that died in war? Their bodies are just planted somewhere and some burned up, some dismembered. And what about all that? So you got all these questions that come up. 
what reasonable impossibility it seems to be that the physical body that dies, rots in a grave, should ever come to life again. Just seems to be an impossibility. There's Here's what I'm telling you. God knows where every part of you is. Now you want to get scientific and you want to go through those things. Here's the facts. The natural cycle of life. Death feeds life. But him said, he said, everything must die for you to live. Life we come, dies, death feeds life over and over again. And to the modern rational mind, people think to themselves, how can this be? How can these people that's been put here and put there and blown here and blown there and burned up here and scattered to the sea, how in the world could the resurrection, as you say, not replacement, but bringing up the same thing with them, how could those, what we would say, 16 elements of the earth ever come back together again? If, look, folks, if, if it was dependent on us, it would never happen. But we believe in the God of the resurrection. I mean, believe that, right? Everybody, all right? So, what of it? The Corinthians were asking Paul the question, the fact concerning Christ's resurrection and our subsequent resurrection is true. How could this possibly happen? How? Why is a resurrection necessary? Why is a bodily resurrection necessary? What they don't understand is when you leave this physical body, let me give you Brother Bam's words, there's a body waiting on you. Amen. Not, listen, not something that, like Brother Bam said, I used to believe, and then he would tell us things that are to be. I used to believe that we'd be a floating spirit, set on a cloud, you know, how it goes through it. But I found out it was a body. Amen. I could touch it. Yes. We could hug. We could shake hands. Amen. We could see one another. We could communicate. This is one body. But then, if I were to leave this, he said, there's a body waiting on me. Amen. Now, our mind would be, well, if I got a body, then I no longer need this one. No. You realize, if I leave this body and I step to that body, God would only feel two-thirds of what his promise is. That's right. This is part of it. That is part of it. Yes. And then these two put together make the whole. Yes. So the prophet would preach three bodies. He would preach my natural body, then he would preach my theophany, yes. then he'd preach my theophany with my natural body yes. becomes my glorified body. Amen. Amen. So I can't be, listen, if I'm trapped, what we'd say trapped, in a theophany throughout all of eternity, I would be limited on what I could do. Right. Oh, I may shake your hand, I may talk to you, but we'd never sit down and have a meal together. We would never fulfill what Jesus said, we'll drink anew in the kingdom because Brother Bam said, that body you don't eat or drink. So that cannot be the conclusion. That's not the final. That's not the climax. But when that body, listen now, comes and picks up this body and then glorifies it, now I can continue to do the same thing I've always done, but not with a law of sin and death working into me any longer.